we can go through the game. All right. So you're playing white and brown bear 1947. 5Q is playing black. And so far, the opening looks pretty standard. Oh. Um, that's a little interesting. I'm not entirely certain what black is attempting to accomplish normally here. Um, A would be standard. Uh, B would be standard. Locally, these are kind of like the ways to finish. Um, obviously, black can also choose Tanuki. Um, Tanuki is a perfectly fine, fine method here. Uh, never really seen this before in the wild. Um, it seems to me like black is under the delusion that he's going to attack an already strong white corner with a shape that is not exactly set up for attacking a white corner. Like This shape has two critical weaknesses, A and B. Um, so this move is a little bit uh, already overplay, and long term I think white can definitely aim to punish this. Um, approach, this is fine. Whoa. Uh, I don't have words for this one. Uh, I think most people would play one. This is usually correct direction. You want to expand the bottom side and uh, also have some attacking pressure against white's two stones. For example, in the future, if white Tanuki is black and makes some attacking placement, maybe here or here. Uh, but this one uh, looks to me maybe he's aiming to play the Hane. I'm not entirely certain what uh, his S4 move is about. But okay, you play the approach. This is fine. Um, and then these at these uh, attach and extend exchanges. These are fairly good for white. Um, we can say uh, attaching A on top of B is the same as attaching to a weak stone, right? Black is sort of foregoing any attacking options like the pincer um, and helping white to also settle locally. And in particular, uh, very, very useful. I would assume that the plan would be something like connect here, and then if white happened to defend somehow, then black would be aiming for this type of move. Um, but it seems that's not what he played in the game. And by the way, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them, Akito. Uh, yeah, I, I guess I had one. Uh, so in the top left, the way to mm -hmm. attack that group, would you said one of the weaknesses is H17. Uh, yeah, I didn't realize that um, later in the game I make like a, a large knight approach instead. Um, yeah, so I think in general the the standard shape that we very very often see would be like um, this. And black will try to finish development of the position this way, and then in the future white will white will invade here. Mm -hmm. And then against this, white has uh, this type of method to escape. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. And um, this is a fairly well-known type of sequence that you can play against this. But actually, um, you can forego all of it and just attack the shape directly. Oh, if you're already strong in the corner, like white can defend, but then you can jump back with the knight's move. And actually, it's very annoying for black to handle this group. Gotcha. Yeah, because white's already on the vital point. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, and of course, there's also this one, which is useful, because if he plays here, then you have sort of like an extra sente with the hane threatening the cut. Okay. Right. Yeah. And like, of course, black could defend, but if black defends like this, then white can simply fly. Right, right. Okay. Um. So that would be pretty standard. I missed this um, opportunity in the game, for sure. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, this H3 placement is a little bit interesting. Uh, I know a lot of times in this shape, um, one, one move black really wants to exchange quickly is A. So this might have been an opportunity for black to fly here with the idea that if white blocks, black can get a much stronger turn in Sente. It is true that white is threatening a cut in the shape, but if white ever cuts like this, then obviously black is set up with a Tarian capture. So um, white could, for example, connect here, and if white connects here, black could defend the cut indirectly by playing the Hane. And then one for two is an exchange that will allow black to attack the white group, either like this or like this. From the future. Um, the attack without that exchange gives white an opportunity to defend um, either the two stones on the side, you can do it by descending or you can do it by jumping, or white can of course push and cut like you did in the game. Um, this would be the most active way. And then black plays the jump here. This is... Uh, I could see why he did it, right? Um, black only has three liberties, but actually Hane here is very important. 
And I think black should spend the time to play it. Because even if white tried to, like, let's say, make a net and capture, first of all, it's not actually that easy to capture the black stones. If they really want to escape, they can. Right? Three is kind of a test of G to walk out of the gates of Mordor here. Um, but also, black could consider at this point just to play the Hane and then extend. If black loses the three stones in the center, it's a bit of a loss, but the counterattack against h3 is iffy, and black is reducing the right side naturally this way, and I can't I can't say that this would be uh, the best result in the world for white. Um, but not taking that is very, very strange. I think now white for sure can play the Atari and defend, and when white defends here, black has this issue where he needs to live in the corner. Um, I, so I can make this by Sente. Hmm? I thought this defense was too slow. Uh, I knew that it was there, but I, I thought it was too slow. Um, Why slow? So I, slow, sl slow would just mean that um, the move itself doesn't really accomplish much. Yeah. But actually, the move itself is Sente against the corner, so it can't be slow. Um, because if black doesn't if black doesn't respond to this move, then black can die. Okay. Now, right, so black needs to answer. <laughs> gotcha. I definitely messed this up because I got this and black did not die. Actually, yeah, yeah actually, <laughs> I think even you can even clamping is probably technically better than S2 in this shape. But, um, but yeah, so here black actually needs to answer if you connect. Okay. Um, so connecting can't can't be slow in this position. Um, okay, so in the game you jumped, and then black defended the center. Um. There's a couple of different shapes black could choose. This one is logical. Um, I think another good one would be here. This would be developing black's um, center control much more actively than the one that black chose in the game. Very often there's a bit of a, a fight that can happen if black chooses to save or a sacrifice if black chooses to play like this. Um, but black can get a little bit better central control leaning at one. This one, it seems uh, ob pretty ob obvious that he's aiming at A. Um, and A is, don't get me wrong, fairly big. Probably big enough that I would be aiming to break it now. J4 is a very attractive option for white. Um, because you've played uh, A, B is kind of your right at any time now. Um, so connecting at B becomes a little bit less urgent once you've made this, um, this sort of 1-2 exchange. You can start moving out, surrounding the center. Um, because you've made this uh, this stone at one your head position, right? You're saying, okay, my group is going this way. And your stone is very very active in the center on the fourth line. So you can, you can use that to your advantage with something like J4. Or if you're a little bit more worried about a base, you can play this one. And now you won't ever have to worry about this again. Um... Connecting here, of course, is also Sente, so it's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with making the exchange, but now, for certain, you should be flying. Okay. Uh, this one is um, a little bit painful. Um, you're going to have to make some pretty submissive moves to live. For example, after this exchange, you kind of need a move here to be alive. And if you have to trade L4 for K2, it's already a good exchange for black. Um, the corner is a carpenter square. Do you know what this is going to end up being? Mm, I remember seeing it in the James Davies book, but no, I didn't. I don't have it memorized, or I don't experience okay. it enough. So yeah, I didn't. Nope. I, I it didn't. happens. This happens very frequently in a lot of the AI Joseki, specifically the ones that happen with, um, uh, like the two space low pincer, the knights move press in the cut. So I would recommend learning these. Hmm. Um, a lot of times you can get Ko. Sometimes, like in this game, there was a chance for a Seki. So it's very useful to know how to play against the Carpenter Square so you can avoid having to play passively. Here, you should be flying. Okay. I'll, I'll review um, it. Yeah, this one is very, very big move, if you can play this or even just settling. Um, so this was uh, not a bad placement by your opponent. This was a relatively good move. Um, blocking leaves a little bit of a weakness. If um, he challenges you with this move, it's going to be very painful. Uh, usually connecting is a little bit better. Um, this way, when he challenges, you have a lot of liberties, and you can attach out or fly. And then later you've got uh, L2 or K2 to try to make a big eye shape. Makes it hard to capture. 
Um, and it, but more importantly, it takes away L4. This one will still leave L4. S small difference. Um, <clears throat> okay, so he does L4. You go into S2. Um, might have been a little quick. I think K2 is probably more accurate. Mm, just guarantee um, your life. Yeah. yeah, because if you get strong, then he has to worry about the corner, right? So make it his burden, not yours. Yeah. When you go in the corner, now you're you're having to do something. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, he can extend, and it gets very, very complicated. Mm -hmm. If this becomes a big eye capturing race versus another capturing race on the outside, do you know how many liberties <laughs> you'll need to win it? Mm, no. Mm, yeah. So, And it can be very difficult to calculate if you don't know the, um, the math behind it. So usually better not to put yourself in that situation unless you're incredibly familiar with it. I think even he might be able to Hane. Um, which is what he did in the game, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so then here against the Hane, definitely you can connect um, like this because he can't play 0-1. If he plays 0-1, do you know how to proceed? Uh, <laughs> mm, <laughs> I guess uh, even just the uh, Atari, Atari looks okay because then I have Sente, which I'll get S3 next. Possible, but yeah. You can also just fly. Okay. You have a lot of different moves. You can fly, you can break it R2, you can Hane T4. Mm -hmm. All playable moves. Right? But this one, you don't actually gain any more, any more eyes with this. It's still just one eye. Mm -hmm. So now it's kind of like, if you end up having to answer again, it's like he got Q1 as a Sente against your outside group. Mm -hmm. Rather than as a Sente where you get to play the next move inside. So he, he gains a move in tempo when you respond like this. Gotcha. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. And now he can play this one, and your group is not locally alive anymore. Yeah, I think he does get that later. It can be pretty hard to answer if he plays it now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So, usually better not to allow him to do that. But okay, he played this one. Uh, this is an interesting choice. Normally, the moves against the um, S2 move are one of the, the one two points, but this one is this one is fine. Um, you extended. He played the Hane. At this point, you should leave this. You shouldn't even you shouldn't even answer. You need to live. So take care of your life and death first. Either like jump at K3 or jump at K2. Be alive. Um, trying to go for this uh, for this type of elaborate kill right now. Um, Think, think about it this way. If the best you can get in the corner is a Seki, right? And you're not alive on the outside, what happens? Yeah, the outside dies. It's not a Seki. <laughs> right. And the real question is, from this point, can you make it anything other than a Seki before he captures you on the outside? Meaning, if he ignores this and he plays this move, can you win it? Mm, I thought I would be able to break the other eye and kill him, but... You can make a dead shape, but yeah. the question is, it's a big eye shape, and who's going to be faster in the race to capture? Right, right. Right? Mm -hmm. So, it's a lot to... Con it's, it's very complicated to read, but you leave a lot of the risk here. I haven't read it out, so I don't know. Um, if you have, like, an AI, you can look at it and see what the AI would do. Uh, with K2, maybe it's fine. But as a, as a human player, it's going to be very, very difficult to... Um, it's going to be very, very difficult to, how do you say, like, deal with this, to be able to calculate it out from, from now, the whole race, right? Mm -hmm. So you can fix that problem by playing here. And if he spends another move inside, then one for two is gaining, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's just a good exchange for white if black goes back to stop S1. Right. I think I was because saying get, that in myself. Yeah. Like, if he lives in the corner, it doesn't bother me as much. Yeah, like you can play that, or you can go here, or maybe you can try to attack. Because now his, once you're alive, his shape is thin, right? Mm -hmm. So this is this is going to be like the future. So if you live, you're affecting the future, right? But if you're trying to play in the corner, then you're getting caught up in the local state of affairs, and you yourself might not be safe enough to actually do this. Mm -hmm. um, but okay, he played here, and now you can you can drop the T5, and how does he stop the Seki? <laughs> Uh, R1, right? But then, yeah, but yeah, how does he stop Seki? It's still right, Seki. Right, right, right. Right, so... 
Yeah. So if it plays out like this, and you play you play t5, um, actually, I think he can still play k2. Um, and now I'm pretty certain that you're going to die here. Um, actually, what I should probably do, um, I should probably drag this over here as well, and that way, if anybody follows, like Aaron M84, um, I can thank them for their following. Because normally I don't see it because I don't usually keep it up. But like this, I can keep this up so that I can I can see um, who follows and I can thank them for that. Cool. I only I also only have one monitor, so it's um it's incredibly useful for me to have that up. Um <laughs> Yeah, so here <clears throat> Um, it's already fairly risky, and technically speaking, white should probably be dead if white tries to make the Seki. Um, going for the Ko still doesn't stop this. The Ko is actually more favorable for black because it means it's more steps that you have to play to take the inside liberties to try to capture, yes. and then it turns into the big eye capturing race. Yeah, it's a two-step co at the moment, right? Yeah, and then right. I didn't even th think about the big eye part. Yeah, so here, I think it just both players were misreading the position. Now white all of a sudden has a chance again. You can live, right? So, um, but you took the co. This is better for your opponent. <laughs> um, but it is, it is a co fight now. And he has plenty of co threats. For example, he can play A. Um... You know, he can still seal you in at B, even though he might die in the corner. If he can seal and get a good outside, it could be worth it. Um, he can try to get a move around C, D, E. All playable. Um, but he chooses this one. Okay, this is this is interesting. And then he retakes the Ko. Um, and then you get the push. This is very big, very big move. Retake the Ko. He finally comes back to this move. And then um, when he comes back to this move, you're able to take away the liberty. Yeah, mm -hmm. make it a one-step Ko. Yeah. Well, now it's kind of direct Ko, right? Mm hmm. Mm, this one? Okay. Yeah. You can do the same Ko threat from here. Mm-hmm. Don't I get in general, threats with the throw-in, though? Yeah, we do. But he's going to ignore the ko anyway. Mm. He can't afford to answer. He doesn't have another valid threat that's worth more than the corner. Uh, mm -hmm. Right. I was, so, yeah, I was worried that he'd play, like, B15 or something. I think that was um, a threat I would have had to answer. Sure, but B B15, do you have to answer? Can he kill the corner in one move? Uh, I mean, maybe not one move, I suppose. Then, yeah, if you can't kill the corner in one move, then it's fine. It's not a co-threat. Okay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, the co-threat, the, the follow-up needs to be impactful. The follow-up doesn't actually accomplish much outside of a small reduction. Then if that reduction is worth less than the corner, then you, you ignore it. Mm. Uh, this is Black going crazy. Black loses the co, and then he thinks it's the end of the world. Mm. So he attaches to the stone like a mad person. Instead of just playing solid, really what he should be doing is he should be assessing his weaknesses on the rest of the board and like playing to to consolidate and wait for the chance, right? Mm -hmm. White's already made several mistakes. White will make several more. So wait for the, the chance to catch back up, play very solid, and then just um, punish his opponent's mistakes with his strong positions later instead of trying to throw these Hail Mary attachments um, against the corner that are clearly not working. Um, hey, so you played Atari. You don't actually need this exchange before connecting. What's the difference between playing AB and simply connecting at one? Gotcha. Yeah, so A makes uh, black stronger, just like last time. This was the same thing we right. talked about. Because, like, here, if you, if you connect, right, and he extends, the reason you'd play the Atari would be to stop two. But you shouldn't actually care about this. Mm. Right? Because if he if he has a weakness in his shape, i.e. this cutting point, right? Then you have ways to aim at it later. A, B, C, D, E. You have several ways to put pressure on the group as a whole. When you capture the corner, what happens to these stones? 
Uh, which corner? I'm sorry. The bottom right corner. Uh, I didn't capture it, right? So, are you talking about the three stones? Yeah, yeah. When you capture the three stones in the corner, yeah, what happens? Uh, white became thick. We don't have to worry right. about its safety anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. So, when you have a thickness, what are you trying to do with it? Uh, use it to fight. Use it to attack something, right? Yep. But if you're fixing all of your opponent's problems and making him immune to attack from the get-go, how do you use it? Mm. Right? So this is kind of not congruent with the idea of the thickness that you have in the bottom right corner. Okay, I got like you. Like, this is, this is already becoming less useful. There's no shape point to aim at, and Black's three stones are very hard to kill. Mm. Where's the meaningful attack going to come from? Right? Right. Now, he played this move, which is absolutely terrible, right? Mm -hmm. He's trying to make a base against the thick group. Um, if you want to play against strong stones, attaching would be the better way to do it. This is how you make a light shape, and you can do, like, a sort of sabaki. Right? Like, if Black could get something like this, Black could make a base and over-concentrate. But um, this one is not really anything. This is kind of a pass move. Um, and actually, even White can play this Atari. But, like, you can even just push... You can also just defend in several several ways. This is uh, essentially a free move. It's it's a pass move and or worse than passing. Uh, I would argue that it, it potentially loses points. Um, so yeah, K17 is a little soft. You can play this one. Another common attacking point you can do is here, uh, playing two space away from the fourth line stone. Yeah, and the reason that's... is if he tries to make a base, then you can block like this. And you have a fairly nice territory in the corner. Gotcha. Yeah, and, that was my logic for the um, the two spaces, but I played low. I didn't realize that I don't, high is a better one. Yeah, it's because he can't really invade it, right? Like, if you go here, this move is probably not feasible for black. This is a very painful vital point. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you would play low to block this, but I don't really think you need to worry about it in this case. Okay. It's so a small, like, moderate difference. And then he goes crazy. He tries to counterattack. Mm -hmm. Again, he's he's not really strong enough to handle it. I would think if he wanted to do that, he should exchange this first. And then go here. Mm. Um, because now, at the very least, if white ever peeps at A, he, he, he can for sure block at B. Right? Because if white ever tries to go like this and capture the inside stones, it's like, woohoo, I captured two stones. Okay, but you're dying on the outside. Mm -hmm. And then there's a cutting point he can he can aim at. Like, that would be making sense. Um, but to do it directly without any help, if White just simply goes here, I'm not really sure what he's going to do about this. Mmm, -hmm. mm, the jump. Uh, this is a fighting shape. So if you're strong enough nearby to fight, you can play this way. Um, you can also just pincer. Like, this would be the safest. Um, take care of your one and only weakness and ask Black how Black is going to handle you. If he goes here, this is a really nice follow-up because he remains separated. You have Mi of 3 and 5 um, or, or 4 and 5. So like if he covers from center, you're connected underneath. There's no way for Black to separate. But okay, we're choosing to fight. Um... Black jumps out. A little bit soft again. These two stones are harder to gain leverage against than this cutting point. And giving white a chance to take the base while fixing the cutting point feels really strong for white, in my opinion. Mm. I don't think I want to give this to white. I think if I was black, my next move is probably here. Because I want to ask white a question. How are you going to defend the corner? Like, by making AB and leaving the cutting point, right, black got stronger. And now you're kind of asking the question to white. Like, if white plays like this, then white will save the corner, but black is gaining strength naturally. And these two stones have gotten weaker as a result. That's not to say, of course, that white is going to be in trouble or anything, right? Mm, but if black plays like this, it's at least a fight. And so I think that this became very good for you already. Um, very, very hard to see how black is going to continue. Whoa. Okay, that's Gote. Uh, White pushed anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think you can just uh, punish him. Mm. Why not this one? 
Yeah, I don't know why I wasn't thinking of uh, age 17. I think throughout the game, I just didn't even think about it. Yeah, generally, I see this shape. And if I can attack the whole black as, a, as, as, as one unit with my thickness, I prefer that to trying to cut off the tail part of the groups. Um, now, that's not to say I think that this move is bad or, like, this move would be bad. But, um, like, you already spent a whole move on defense that also sort of attacks. Mm -hmm. And you've got two stones that are kind of left hanging. So, like, if you push here, um, what Black is trying to do is figure out how to fix the shape in a way where he gets stronger with the outside to then play something like H17 or the Peep to punish you. Because if he can get a move to punish and you have to run, what exists in the south of the board waiting for you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, his friends. It's a sea of black stones, right? Mm -hmm. So I think um, pushing like this, even though locally I don't think it's bad, I think um, you can just settle the two stones and it's it's going to be a much easier game for white. Um, but okay, you turned. Black extended and you cut. Okay. Uh, the outside cut first. Uh, which side did... Uh, what is Which is the side that you don't want? The inside or the outside? Uh, well, I would have liked the outside, but I thought that if I played Q13 first, and let's say he counterattacks, and With? then uh, R13. Okay, so if he plays this one, mm -hmm. then you get the outside cut much easier. Yeah, and then, but I didn't think it was that valuable, so now he would, you know... Uh, you could also extend. Hmm... Didn't read this one out, <laughs> this extension. I read the other yeah. cut, the O13. It was like this, you can play this way. Okay, yeah, this is kind of nice. This would be using your thickness. <laughs> yeah. But in general, in general, you want to cut from the side that you don't want, right? right. So that would be the inside. Mm -hmm. Make the inside cut so you can play stronger on the outside. And then in the event that black wisens up and goes, okay, I'm going to defend the outside, well, then now, free. Mm -hmm. And that's that's good profit, right? You'll have to withstand Black's attack, but that's good profit. Yeah. You could, you could also probably hold off on this. And again, just double back to this move, I think is also very strong. Mm -hmm. This would be very natural. Um, and then if Black is defending, then you can surround the whole thing and make Sabaki in the center. If you erase the value of the outside before cutting at Q13, it's going to make um, a bit of a conundrum for your opponent. Which is, do I give up the inside profit and take the outside that's already nerfed? Or do I take the inside and remove that profit from white but leave the outside weak to attack? Right, so always being like aware of what's coming next in the future. Um, if you can put him in a dilemma where making this stronger isn't valuable but leaving it for attack is very painful, then it's just already going to be very good for you. Mm. Okay, so I think this was just uh, sort of like cut from the wrong side direction. Uh, Black's extension was a good move. Um, you can follow, but I think it kind of misses the point a little bit. Um, oh, this one. I think Black should be extending uh, the other way. The three stones at this point, they're not cutting stones. They're not valuable. So if White Han is at two, then Black needs to be attacking the whole thing. Right? So... I think this was a very critical miss by Black to play this one. This is a very painful move. Good, good, good. Extending liberties. You love to see it. And then Black took the outside point center three. This is making sense. Um, okay, Kosumisuke, this is not a bad move. Um, so you're asking Black if Black wants to well, wedge in at P11 or simply extend, or what Black wants to do here. I don't hate this move. Um, black extends, that's fine. White bumps, that's fine. Um, although, did you need it? I don't think you needed this one. I think now you can you can put more pressure. Okay. Is there a threat yeah, with this? It. No. Once you uh, once you honey on top, you, you get two ways for white to do good. Yeah. Exactly. Right. So. And there's always the cut of A, which is painful, so it's very hard for Black to support something like this. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think you needed this one. This one is a little bit of a softy move. Mm. Um, you're giving up kind of the next move on the outside to your opponent. It's like a small chance for Black. Uh, what the best way is for the attack, mm, not entirely certain. 
uh, he can maybe try to seal you in. Maybe this one will work, or maybe he can try to take the base, make you run. It's hard because he's a little bit weak. I'm not really sure if he's got a good way to strengthen the weakness first. Um, he has maybe some attachment here he can try to get some value out of. But um, Black really needs to be spending some time there. Um, this... Okay, this is a move, but it's not Sente. Uh, why finally comes back to this one. Mm, I think at this point it's very clear Black needs to block this way. Mm, so I think instead of instead of this, I would recognize that you're attacking as a whole, and you don't want to offer him the opportunity to to hurt you. So maybe you just surround the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Make good shape in the center. Because once Black blocks here, what's the follow-up? Are you really going to spend a stone extending? Uh, this seems like it's uh, very helpful, right? Black just pushes. And now now what are we doing, right? It's like we're, we're, pre we're threatening to cut, but Black is proving to us that the cut is not valuable. Mm -hmm. Right now, right? And so if we step back again, saying, okay, I'm going to cut you, you know, Black can just keep going. Mm -hmm. Okay, cut me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's not going to care because if, you know, something like this... How do the two stones live now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know you're making it very, very hard for your topside position with all these exchanges. Um, and maybe, maybe you get something, but maybe you don't. Oh, this one. This is not good. You don't ever want to attach to weak stones. This is going to help white. Good move. Um, cross cut. <laughs> I guess he had to try something. Okay, Atari, connect. This is making sense. One of the rare times you want to Atari a crosscut shape is actually very often when this crosscut shape has this uh, Panther Knights move next to it, and this Atari can break that shape. This is a very, very common thing to know. Mm -hmm. um, so for anybody watching that might be in the chat that might be relatively new to go, maybe double-digit Q, single-digit Q, um, generally we extend from cross cuts, but in situations like this where they have that knight's move relationship and you can cut it, um, Atari connect becomes a very powerful method. Um, the and then black chose, yeah. yeah, black chose empty triangle. Okay. This is making some degree of sense, but actually white has, uh, a and B to continue. So it's not so, not so painful for white. Um, okay. You chose to push out. This is making sense. He blocked, he pushed and cut. Um, cutting. This is perhaps a little risky. Maybe, maybe instead of that cut first, you start with this one. Right? Mm -hmm. This one removes any ambiguity from the, um, from the position for you. It's just direct route. There's no way for him to... For him to change the move order. Anything else? Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the follow, Cantankerous. Yeah. Um, so here he can play this one, for example, right? And the Satari is kind of like breaking the tempo, then he can connect. Mm -hmm. And you've okay. always got the issue of the liberty problem with A, right? Mm -hmm. You know, so if it goes this way and he's able to get extra liberties against two, can you win? Right. No, I don't think so. Yeah, I hated taking away my liberty yeah. with N12. So yeah, I actually, I think if I think if it goes this way, you're probably going to lose on the top side. Mm -hmm. If he gets the K18 attachment, I think you're going to have a liberty shortage, and you'll probably die in a Sekito Bori. This is a very, very common way to uh, narc yourself with a Tombstone Tessuji. <laughs> um, just to kind of prove what that would look like, let's just assume that there was some sort of... Um, some sort of like variation where it happened like this, right? Mm -hmm. Very often the shape turns into something similar to this and white can die. It might go a slightly different way, but it looks like the capturing race will be hard if he plays the Hane at one. So yeah, definitely do this so that he can't uh, change up the move order on you so easily. Um, this one... He did not play this one, thank God he connected. And by not taking your liberty, you were uh, he's able to cut. Um, or you're able to cut him, rather. And then he's dead. Okay. And then that happens as expected, and then you invade. Okay. So at this point, I think, um, white is very clearly winning. 
black got some territory back on the top side. The white got very thick in the center, got to keep both corners, and is now playing in the next big area of the board. Mm. Um, you know, white's got a lead on points, and um, there's still some benefit you can get against the right side group around S10. So you have um, you have a lot of potential play that you can do here. Uh, okay, he plays the pincer. That's fine. Um, you invade, push, cut. Okay. Very weird he chose to play this one. Very, very weird he chose to play this diagonal. Okay, this is all fine. On a connect is also okay. And then here. Um, all right. Anything that I can think of? I think it's pretty, pretty clear he's desperate now. And you just need to figure out how to reduce sort of the center naturally, right? Okay, clamp is good. Uh, he should ignore this. He really shouldn't. Um, he really shouldn't answer. He needs to keep going for center. If white captures like this, it's not so meaningful. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe instead of clamping at this timing, white can fly. Yeah. yeah. Or you can even start. You can even start by getting in with uh, this exchange first. This Atari is uh, just a gen in general a great exchange to make because you have the makings of a good shape here. Mm. Um, and if he's having to play moves like this to defend, then you can play moves like this to really make good sabaki and break the the middle. It's hard for him. There's weak points at A. Um, you could even target those with something like this. And if let's just say he defends right. Then you can even make like a even bigger shape in the center. Probably I would still do this one. It's got the best relationship, I think, between most of your stones. There's not really a clear target point for black to aim at. And I think like this, the game is probably over. I don't really see where black's gonna make up the territory. Uh this exchange is small. You can save that. Yeah. Oh, he ignored you. Okay, good move. Good move. Okay, playable. Um, right, mm, this Atari. Is this a good exchange? <laughs> I thought so, I but uh, he was able to get out. Although it worked out for me anyway. Mm, I don't think it was supposed to work out for you. It seems very difficult to make this work. In my opinion. Granted, that's just my opinion. Um, mm, what would be the cleanest way here? I think generally in these positions, rather than play exchanges that short your own liberties, you should just, um, if you have exchanges that can gain liberties either by capturing or by extending, then it's probably going to be better to play those. So something like one, two, or three will probably be more optimal than atari from the outside and shrinking your liberties down. Like, maybe you can just turn here. Because mm. the problem is, these cutting stones are not easy for him to attack when you've got the protection of both of the Hanes. No matter which way he cuts, your connection is Atari and you can gain liberties. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, he goes like this, you can just jump, make liberties in the center. And then he's got to worry about the, the capturing race condition on the left side. Okay, so this one, this is probably it's going to be fine, but I think it loses a little bit for white, shorting your own liberties. And then I think for certain you should extend here. Hmm. Um, like this move is huge. This move, <laughs> absolutely huge, massive. Um, okay, uh, he played the empty triangle. He could have tried cutting first, like just trying to chop. If he can make like a good chopping condition. Yeah. He can maybe try to get some counterplay in the center. This one... Okay, so he's trying to capture three stones on the left side, but I think even White can just push, and it's painful. And he finally goes back to do all the chopping, but it's a little bit late now. I think pretty much the game is over. I don't really see how White's going to lose from here. Mm. Like, this is gaining very little territory, and all White needs really is liberties. So any strong move that gains liberties in the center is good for you. Oh, like here, you don't even have to jump, you just push. Mm. All you need are libs. 
Because eventually you're gonna if you don't make a second eye, you have to semi dory this anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, for those in the chat that don't know what that means, uh, semi dory just means that there are dead stones inside your territory, and you're in a position where you're forced to actually fill the liberties and capture the dead stones. Um, if this white group here does not have two eyes, um, then black is gonna force uh, white to spend the liberties here to remove these stones. Um, but all you need here in this shape is liberties, so just keep pushing. Don't play moves that short your own liberties like this. Because all you do is create uh, more food for your opponent to nom on. And then by shorting, shortening your liberties, you're just increasing the speed with which you need to come back to these moves. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then like from here, um, he could have squeezed. Uh, he definitely could have squeezed. And probably he should have squeezed. Right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll just squeeze it like this. And then after the squeeze, he can go back and connect and let you capture. And then he can end this exchange in Sente. Okay. Okay, but you lost the four stones here. That's fine. He connected. You semi dory the middle. Now you go back and semi dory the left side. And the rest of this just looks like it's going to be Yosei. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's all Yosei. Yosei, Yosei, Yosei. Yeah, the rest is endgame. Okay. So, some things I took away from this game uh, is definitely to recap the Carpenter Square on the bottom. Uh, living <laughs> first and just allowing him to live small in the right corner would have been better. So, like, living at K2. Right. And the attacking point for in the top left was uh, H17, more so than K17. Uh, so that's right. some, that was something uh, I think is obvious now that I think about it, but uh, I, didn't, I didn't even touch it the whole game, right? And that was, like, a vital point for it. Right. Those are definitely the things I took away from this. Uh, is there anything, like, really important you think that I missed? Um, mm, yeah, so it just seems to me that you could probably increase the quality of your play a little bit just by having more of a focus on your follow-up in the front of your mind. Because if you recognized at points like this, right, that you probably weren't going to win the game here, but that the next part of the game was going to be this, mm -hmm. then you would have found moves like J4 much faster, right? Yeah, and yeah. also just the recognition that um, you know, take a second, step back, look at the whole board, mm -hmm. and understand sort of the impact that your exchanges are going to have on it, right? Because what happens with a lot of players, especially players that are in the high SDK level, that are specifically around three Q to to one Q one done, your your global awareness is just now starting to to awaken. You're just now starting to really understand that other parts of the board affect each other. Right, but during this whole fight, did it ever cross your mind that if A became strong, and B was super attackable, and if B was weak, his whole moyo collapses? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I definitely thought about it. that's why one of the reasons I picked Q eight instead of uh, S six. But then I ended yeah. up coming back anyway, right? So yeah, <laughs> and then you ended up betraying you ended up betraying it, right? So you see yeah, how yeah. how these became non congruent. Mm -hmm. Right, so you you had the idea for a second; it was there, mm -hmm. and then you lost it. Mm -hmm. So yeah. just keeping that in your mind, right? Like because for stronger players, when they see shapes like this, we can understand where the weaknesses on the board are, and we know what we're going to aim at long term. Like I know that there's a weak stone at C12, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I also know that it might not be profitable to attack it locally right now. But that stone is very soft; it's attacking a, a corner that's alive. The only thing that it really has going for it is that maybe maybe there's a follow-up for black here. But that's kind of endgame, right? Like, white's not going to die here in the corner. But you can see white shape will be alive. So there's not really a threat outside of territory. Um, but the stone itself is also not strong, right? Because white, if white gets a sente, white can attack that stone. And this shape is also not, not so strong. 
right? The tiger's mouth has a weak point here, or here, here. Many different ways you can attack the tiger's mouth shape, too. So, like, long-term, I know I can aim at those, right? Mm -hmm. But I also know that diagonally, there's a weak group at B. So if I'm able to attack B, right, if I'm able to, to get moves that can sort of surround it, then what's that going to do for me, right? Where are those stones going to aim? Yeah, you would be able to gain uh, profit on the right and break the center moyo. Right. right. Exactly. Like it's gonna break yeah, it's gonna break the center moyo, but notice where the arrows are going. Mm -hmm. If we imagine that there's like white stones around that, that, that blue semicircle line, you know, those stones in the center have have degrees of influence. They're circles, right? Three hundred and sixty degrees they radiate influence. And the influence is only obstructed by other stones, but if they see empty space, they can do work in that direction. So I know that if I can get moves that are surrounding this B group, right? Mm -hmm. Then what's gonna happen long term to those weaknesses? These are going to get magnified through the course of the game, and I'm going to be able to do something with them because I'm much more supported to take advantage of it. You know, I can make use of the fact that C12 is soft when I'm strong enough in the center to make sure that it, that running becomes very unfavorable for it. And so for me at this point, I'm, I'm not concerned with what's going on in the bottom right corner. I'm concerned about the outside already. I don't care if black lives. Mm -hmm. So I'm not even thinking about what he's getting in the, the the corner. I want out now. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that makes complete sense. Yeah, you can just let much him bigger small and then work on the rest of the board. Yeah, and that's the follow up, right? Because mm -hmm. I recognize that from this exchange, I have a target on the outside. That's where I want to go next. But then you betrayed your feelings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right, And what ended up happening, your A stone becomes less efficient because Black is able to get this exchange in Sente. Mm -hmm. And then we don't even get started about the fact that you probably will die here. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, there were several points, I think, where you could have died. Um, but here for certain, I think he can kill you. Definitely review it with AI, though, because I didn't read it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's fine. And it, the, the concepts are still the same. Whether I can kill him outright or not, right, or just die, but concepts are the yeah. same. That uh, taking the outside would have been more, much more important because the, the inside right. is really small. Yeah, but also the outside is where the rest of the game is, right? Right. Yep. Like the for you're you're not going to spend the next hundred moves playing in the bottom right corner. So when you're when you're trying to solve local situations, you want to be you want to be very aware in the front of your mind how your solution is going to impact your ability to get to where you want to go next. So oftentimes what I do is when I'm thinking about what I'm trying to do in the immediate vicinity in like the local situation, I'm solving for the local problem, but I'm also trying to be conscious of what's coming next. And I want to solve it in a way that's beneficial for that. And if you can do that, you can sort of naturally guarantee that your moves will become more efficient mm -hmm. and there are going to almost always be multi-purpose moves, right? Yeah, yeah. You want to be doing more than uh, one thing with each move. Right. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, it's very clear. Uh, thanks, mm -hmm. Raven. Yeah, not a problem. Thank you so much for uh, allowing me the opportunity to review your game. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. You're doing the work. Um, <laughs> all right. Very well, good. I guess I'll end my recording here. Uh, thanks again. Mm -hmm.